All right, so uh, in the next 20 minutes, uh, we are going to talk, we're going to present you what we want to do. So what we want to do is simple. We want to map buildings indoors. And we're going to present to you a tool that we have developed in order to do that. Because we think today there isn't a good tool available, and that's partly the reason why there are not so many indoor maps. There is also the, the URL to the, to the tool if you want to check it out in between. Let me give you a short outline for the talk. So we're going to start with our vision. Why do we want to have indoor maps? Why develop the tool? What are possible applications for indoor maps? We want to go a little bit into the status quo. Where are we today? How many maps are there? What about the data model that is used, that has emerged as a consensus, as we see it? Um, what are the tools? Why were they not successful in our estimate? Then we present our tool. What are the key features? Why we think that it addresses the issues the other tools didn't address so far? And give a little outlook into what are specific challenges regarding indoor tagging or indoor maps in general. What are the next specific steps we're going to take? And then the most important thing, how you can contribute. Because at the end, it's you who will do the mapping. And hopefully, we can contribute a good tool to do so. So we just picked, for example, four areas of typical applications. Indoor navigation, everybody knows a navigation system outdoors. But indoors, they're still rare. Um, you could do simulations, emergency planning on maps. You can do advertising, interesting for businesses if they have maps. Um, and of course, for maintenance work, that's also attractive. If the light bulb isn't working properly, and then the facility manager can just use the map to say, hey, the light bulb isn't working. Please repair. So. OSM, that's, that's an incredible success story if you look at it. Uh, today, there are over 5 million registered users. And these three pictures tell the story of how successful it was. The entire world was mapped within a short time, I would say. And what we want to do, we want to repeat the story indoors, because buildings are the black spots on the map today. And we think mapping only happens with good tools. So that's why we developed a tool. Apple Maps and Google Maps, of course, they already entered the indoor space. But they are not open. So they don't provide you the data. They just give you services. And they have their own reasons. And they are proprietary, commercial. And we want to we wanna have it open and accessible for everyone. That's our vision. So. If we look at where we are today, you see there is a map of the level tech. That, that's kind of the tech you use, an attribute to, to see if something is indoors. There's happened a little, but not so much in the broad community. So mostly there were initiatives by SNCF, for instance. They said, we map a bunch of train stations. And uh, most of the indoor maps that are today available are done by these private initiatives, and we want to really broaden that so that everybody can take part in mapping indoors. And Adrien is going to tell you a little bit about the data model and the, the consensus. Ah, you have the microphone. So can you hear me correctly? Yeah. So how many of us are aware of the simple indoor tagging scheme? Can so yeah, quite, quite uh, some of you. So the idea was uh, to make something simple for tagging indoors. So this, uh, this uh, tagging scheme was already existing in the uh, OpenStreetMap community, so we didn't invent uh, this. And it has uh, mainly two tags. It has the level tag, which allows to say this feature belongs to this level in a building. So you just put an, uh, a value like 0, 1, 2, and say, OK, this is on this floor. And then the second, second tag is the indoor tag. 
to allow to say what kind of feature you are describing. Is it a room? Is it an area, corridor, and so on? So there are two main tags. There are some over for, uh, for sure, but the two mains are this one. So if I want to describe, for example, a bakery on level one, I say indoor equals room, shop equals bakery, and level equals one. And that's all. It's quite simple. And with this scheme, we can do mostly everything. So there was already existing tools for doing indoor mapping, which are uh, mainly ID and JOSAM. JOSAM is a great tool. It's uh, widely used in the community, but it's a general tool. I mean, you can add uh, extension, you can add plugin to manage, for example, the floor plan. If you have emergency map, architect map of a building, you can add it on JOSAM and draw over to add the features, but it's a plugin. You can have a level filtering. It was uh, added uh, not so long ago, so you can do basic level filtering, but it's not only all the cases. And you have also support for the simple indoor tagging preset, so it's uh, not, uh, not that bad. But JOSAM is a great tool, but it's not meant for everyone. I mean, you have to take some time to learn how to use JOSAM. You can't just take two minutes and uh, add something. It's quite difficult when, uh, when we start. And also, it's not web-based, so it can make it uh, complicated for some people in some condition to access it, so yeah. And we have also ID, which is uh, also another great tool, but it doesn't have the possibility to add a floor plan in the background. You can't uh, load emergency map of, of a building and start adding features. You don't have also the possibility to filter data level by level, so if you are editing indoors, you are editing all level at once, it's not very convenient. And you don't have support for the simple indoor tagging preset, which makes things very difficult. So there was also uh, another attempt so to make indoor mapping more, uh, more popular in the community. For example, I started a fork of ID, which was called ID Indoor, which added some basic level filtering. So you can only edit one level at a time and also uh, adding the simple indoor tagging preset. So you can make sense of the data you are looking at. But it was quite limited, and it was quite hard to follow the track of the new uh, features in uh, the ID, the main ID version. So it was quite not uh, maintained for a long time. And also, you have other tools which are mainly viewers. So you can view the data, but can't edit, like Open Level Up and Open Session Map. So they are interesting, but they are not meant for editing. They are just here for seeing the data. So it's not a complete tool chain. So that's why we started uh, creating this, uh, in the, this, edit, uh, sorry, this indoor editor. And I will present you the main features which are interesting. And the first one is the, is the floor plan import. So you can load uh, images, images of emergency map, architect map, and put it on the map. So you, that way you can set the image being as vi at this position on this building. And you can, for each of uh, them, saying, OK, this uh, plan is for level two. So that way you have information of location and also the uh, vertical position. So you can distort image, the scale, and so on. So it's quite easy to use. You have also indoor specific feature uh, presets, so that way you make sense of the data you have in front of you. It's also easy to add new feature. So mainly, uh, it's uh, the JOSM preset with a new uh, feature type. So you have possibility to add things like building structure, like room, areas, walls, and so on. And also, uh, in some cases, the furniture, if it's uh, available on your data. And also, uh, you can see um, for a single fe uh, feature, uh, both its uh, usage and its structure. If we take an example, the bakery I was presenting uh, just before is at the time a room and also a bakery. So it has a function being a shop and a structure being a room. So that way, in the editor, you have clear preset. It is both a room and a shop. So it's easy to edit. And last thing is that you have a clear a hierarchy in editing. You don't edit everything at once. You have, a, for start, a street mode view. So you have uh, access to the data, but you just browse around. So it's mostly like, uh, like what 
uh, viewer 12. Uh, you can just uh, browse around the map, so it's interesting. You can see the data level by level. And then you go to the editing mode. You can edit the metadata of a single building, saying this one has three levels, for example. And you can then edit one level at a time. So you can draw the floor contour and then add features in this floor. So it's quite easy. You only have what you want to see on the map. OK, so uh, we made it web-based. because uh, So what you see here is the, the change sets done mostly by ID editor, uh, then followed by JOSM. Not surprising, but we think web-based is the better way to go. So our hypothesis is that it's easier because JOSM you have to install on your computer and it, you have to be a little bit more of an expert. That's our take on it. And so we said it has to be web-based and similar in usage like ideas. So that was our take from, from these statistics. There are some challenges specific to indoor mapping you don't have when you map outdoors. And that is if you, most of the buildings are private. That means you have restricted access. You cannot go into any building and just do the mapping. If you go to an airport and do that, people will look strangely at you, probably. Um, it's hard to get the floor plans because in many countries, like in Germany, there is copyright on them, so you need the permission of the owner or the architect in order to do something with them, so you need the consent. Um, but if you get them, it's really useful, because then you can use them as a blueprint and draw on it. Um, technically, if you go in buildings, you lose GPS signal. So outdoors, you can use GPS to record traces, but indoors, you can't. That's a little bit harder, and in general, it's an editor with a two-dimensional view, but you have to map three-dimensionally. So that's a little bit, requires a little bit more of imagination, I would say. So the next step uh, around this uh, topic are mainly uh, involving the community. I mean, we are using the simple indoor tagging, which is uh, doing the job uh, in uh, most of the time. We have some corner cases which already have been discussed uh, during other projects, so they are still there, so we can still improve this tagging. Uh, we can also offer more documentation because simple, the indoor tagging in general is not that simple. So if we want to bring more people in, we need to document things to translate the documentation. So working on this uh, seems important to us. We have also to make uh, indoor data sources easier to access because of the legal restriction uh, you are talking about. So we have to find ways to maybe involve building operators in order to make them liberate the plans for mapping. So we have to imagine uh, some solution around this to make the raw data we need to put uh, indoor data in OSM accessible. And then the editor can also uh, offer new features because uh, it's still a first version, so we can still add more features. So maybe we can add a 3D preview of what you are doing uh, when editing, so you can see uh, the data in three dimensions, so maybe it's more intuitive. Uh, we can also think of showing uh, uh, indoor geolocated images, like the one from Mapillary or OpenStreetCamp, so we have to find a way maybe to say this image is indoor and at this level, so maybe we have to work with image provider to do this. And also maybe think of uh, tools for semi-automated mapping. We have seen in the past uh, some initiative like uh, the Google one with this uh, device where you can move around and uh, have uh, the whole uh, building mapped with a LIDAR sensor. So maybe we can think of uh, this kind of solution and how we can integrate this in the uh, OpenStreetMap ecosystem. So there are still things to do around this. So if you are interested and want to participate in this effort, there are many ways you can contribute. So as a mapper, uh, most of you can start uh, create indoor data. So if you have a, a building, a shopping mall, train station, whatever, you can go on and uh, start creating the data. It will be easier with the editor. 
Uh, you can also uh, talk about indoor mapping with your local community, so that way it will uh, interest more people. We can also think of uh, reporting bugs or features because you are the users of the editor, so you are the people using it uh, regularly, so having your feedback on how you feel about uh, this editor is always useful. And we should also continue promoting the indoor mapping, so we are not still uh, at full capacity on OpenStreetMap on these topics. Uh, we need to still continue doing presentation, doing uh, talks about it, and then uh, also help uh, local groups launch Mapathon and discuss with building operators, so give, it, uh, give them the keys and documentation to do so properly. As a developer, you can uh, for sure help by uh, contributing, adding new features or fix existing, uh, existing bugs. So you have uh, links to the repository on uh, GitLab and GitHub. And then uh, if you are interested in translating the tool in order to bring, in, uh, bring it to more people worldwide, you can uh, participate on TransFX and add your language in the editor, so it's always useful. For now, it's only available in English and French, so that will be interesting to make it available in more languages. And so don't, don't hesitate to try it, and you can go to this uh, address, and then uh, maybe help us to make it uh, even better. We have ample time for questions. Over there. Thank you. Hi, thanks for the talk. You mentioned that indoor navigation is difficult without GPS or with bad GPS reception. Is there any sort of provision for using Wi-Fi signals like the com competitors are doing for indoor navigation? So could you track them, map them into OpenStreetMap? And if not, is there like, do you know of any service that adds that? Or do you think that's a good idea or not? Well, in general, for indoor navigation, you can use Wi-Fi. Uh, I don't know of any open source uh, indoor navigation libraries available? I think there, there are st uh, still some projects, but uh, nothing really directly usable. I'm not aware of it, so... And you can't tag it in OSM, can you? Uh, we can tag uh, the presence of a Wi-Fi spot and say uh, it is here. Sure, as sure but you, you would need and SSIDs of all yeah. Wi-Fi's in the vicinity. Do you, do you want to add something? Um, uh, just regarding the Wi-Fi, so there are two uh, projects which map of the locations of Wi-Fi hotspots to the coordinates. One of them is, um, what's it called, the Open WLAN map, <clears throat> but it's uh, unfortunately the data sets are under the GPL of it too, which is not very uh, commercially useful, basically. And the, the other one is the make Mozilla's location uh, service, which also does that, uh, but I'm not sure how much alive it is. Uh, can I just, uh, since I've got the mic already, and uh, I wanted to ha have a note uh, on the last slide. Um, you mentioned TransFX for translations. So TransFX is, an, uh, is a proprietary service. Uh, yeah. Would you consider to cha change into either PoEdit or WebLate? I, I would suggest WebLate because it uh, allows you to synchronize the translations with Git. So the translations get committed automatically by the translators without them having to do conscious effort. So yeah. just it's it's free software and it's better. Yeah, and for sure, it's uh, uh, we use the TransFX uh, because uh, it allows to manage translation for open source uh, repository for free, for free no no money. I mean, but. If you want to switch to another solution, I mean, we are open to it, and we just need uh, some people giving effort to, to make this possible. So if you're interested to make the switch from one to another, you can help us, and uh, we'll do, uh, do the switch, for sure. Thank you. Much. Any further questions? OK, let me just go with the mic. Uh, hi. Uh, 
We are working in a campus map because I work in a university in Brazil. And one of the features that is very difficult, and uh, we are now considering to upload our data, we have our buildings already mapped. Uh, but one of the difficult things is about the routing indoor. Like in a complex building, if you have a lot of paths and elevators and uh, stairs. So are you thinking about tags and the structures to make routes, indoor routes? In the you want to answer? Uh, um, sure. I mean, indoor, indoor routing is, is very important if you want to build a navigation system. And we have tried to make it simple to edit the routing graphs so where people can walk. Also, well, three dimensions, yeah. That's the application point of view, right? You, you would like to have it connected, but... And uh, we have an uh, example of uh, people already uh, doing uh, indoor routing, so it's possible, even if we are mapping in two dimensions, to have this 3D uh, dimension routing. So um, we just have to adapt a bit the software in order to make uh, sense of the elevators, of the stairs, and so on. But it's uh, technically feas feasible. It's something which has been done and can be, uh, for sure, uh, done in a better, at a better scale in the future. So. I see, yeah, I saw a question over there. Yeah, so have you thought about doing data validation? Because uh, uh, if you have, um, for mapping, um, when you want to do rendering, it's, uh, you don't really need so much uh, uh, good quality, but if you want to do the routing, you need a lot better uh, data. So. I think, I think an editor could be really good to do data validation on this. Have you thought about it? Uh, well, for now, we just took the perspective of what uh, other editors do. So it's uh, just you can edit the data, and there is no validation. Uh, it's classical. It's uh, what uh, every editors do. But the, uh, what is interesting with uh, this uh, editor is that you have tools to do also validation. For example, uh, we mapped uh, like a few years ago uh, university campus uh, with uh, some of my uh, friends, and we didn't saw that there was a door which was like 19 meters uh, large because it was a, um, a problem in the units used. With the editor, I directly saw that the door was too large, and so I can fix it. So even if it's not already integrated, there are some small tools for validation, and in the future, we want to, to add more tools for validation like Josem do, or like ID is uh, starting to do. So it's something we, we want to, uh, to have in our roadmap. OK, thanks. Any other? Oh. Oh, yeah. Thank you for a great effort doing this editor. And I have a question. Do you consider any connection point uh, with other editors? Because when it's becoming uh, that you edit some features in one editor, it could be complete mess in another. So maybe did you have a discussion or observation how it could be in the future suggest that this part of area you better look in the editor, not ID, but for example, indoor mapping because it's levels and so on. And second question, similar, did you consider connection points in the OpenStreetMap rendering itself when it also can be very cluttered, when it's uh, lots of layers on top of each other? Yeah, in fact, there was uh, already some effort in this uh, to do this because at some point uh, I did this uh, small fork of ID, but I wasn't uh, wanting to develop a full editor. I was thinking, OK, we can maybe improve existing editors. Uh, it was not the priority of uh, the other editors to integrate the indoor, data, the indoor data and uh, do proper rendering. So, because there are many things to do on other editors, so I understand that it's not on the roadmap and doesn't make sense to develop this. And well, so there was some improvements on the existing tool, for example, Josem, which integrates the level filtering for now. We hope there is uh, this kind also uh, of support in ID. It's not yet implemented. And um, there was also effort to, to push forward on the main rendering of OpenStreetMap. 
but also uh, the issue was closed like yesterday and uh, we don't want the, the people maintaining this uh, actually are not that much inter interested in the issue so maybe it's something we need to push forward to to say okay this is coming the indoor data will arrive we need to adapt the the whole ecosystem to make it uh, consistent to make it properly rendered everywhere so I think we still need as a community to do some work on this and yeah there was effort to do this in the past but it's not uh, yet done so we need to continue pushing this forward. Thank you. Uh, we get a close here so give a final round of applause to our presenters.